Situated at the most northerly point of Britain's West Midlands region lies a vast nature reserve. And whilst the dense forests and sprawling heathland of this area of outstanding natural beauty bring joy to countless visitors each year, they have also played host to incidents of great suffering and misery. Join us this week as we explore the horrors of Cannock Chase. Regular viewers of our channel will know that we have already ventured into the dark history of Cannock Chase in previous episodes. Designated an area of outstanding natural beauty, this region has played host to several haunting encounters with enigmatic entities and beings, the most notorious of which is reported to be a young girl with completely black eyes, who has been encountered by a significant number of local residents and visitors. Her apparently supernatural abilities and origins remain shrouded in mystery, although they may potentially be linked to perhaps the darkest incident in the region's past. In the recent reprise of our episode on black-eyed children, we revisited the chilling events from the 1960s in which Raymond Morris abducted three young girls and brought them to Cannock Chase. Tragically, it was here that he ended their lives and disposed of their bodies. Many historians and local commentators believe the mysterious entity to be the soul of one of these three victims, forever bound to the place where her life was so brutally ended. But as with similar sites the world over, this former royal hunting forest appears to be a focal point for a far wider range of bewildering and inexplicable activity, with apparent sightings of cryptids, instances of what are believed to be time slips, and UFO activity all having been reported there. During the 1970s and 80s, Cannock Chase and the various towns and villages which surround it became synonymous with one of the UK's oldest supernatural tropes. Numerous stories were published in local newspapers detailing how travellers crossing the region had come face to face with what was believed to be a hellhound. The entity involved in these incidents was described as being substantially taller and bulkier than the largest canine breeds, black in colour and unlike any animal the witnesses had ever encountered. One evening in January of 1985, Sylvia Everett and her husband were driving along Penkridge Bank Road, one of the several main roads that cuts directly through the centre of the chase. It was a clear night with the road ahead well lit not only by the headlights of their car, but also by the full moon shining above. Sylvia was forced to step hard on the brakes as she caught sight of something moving slowly across the road ahead, but when the car finally came to a halt, both she and her husband were stunned to see what resembled a small patch of mist situated directly in the centre of the highway. As the pair watched on, this mass of fog slowly materialised into the outline of a large dog-like creature, with a broad torso, powerful legs and large head. And yet, despite the obvious canine features, both witnesses could still see the car's headlights illuminating the carriageway beyond. A pair of bright yellow eyes then formed upon the face of this manifestation, which regarded them for what seemed like an eternity. Then, with a sudden movement, the entity was gone, disappearing into a thick patch of undergrowth, not far from where it had been standing. Another of the reported incidents had previously taken place during the summer of 1972, 
and involved a local resident named Nigel Lee. Unlike the Everetts, he was driving along a more open stretch of the chase during nautical twilight. Despite it being overcast, there was no suggestion of rain, and so Nigel was taken completely by surprise when a thunderbolt struck the heathland off to his right. Coming to a halt, he exited his vehicle out of curiosity, but within seconds he was back inside, fumbling to engage the door locks as a huge black form emerged from the smoke generated by the lightning strike. Nigel would later describe this animal as being bigger than any dog he had ever seen, completely black in colour and possessing a pair of glowing greenish yellow eyes. Moving in an almost ponderous fashion, constantly sniffing the air around it, the hound moved ever closer to the road. At this point it seemed to become aware of the driver's presence, fixing Nigel with a glare that seemed to last forever. His nerve broken, he quickly resumed his journey, with the hound apparently remaining still beside the road, watching the departing vehicle. Several weeks later, Nigel was involved in a large industrial accident at his place of work, in which one of his closest friends was killed. He would remain fully convinced that the incident was pretended by his encounter with the sinister hellhound on Canic Chase the creature acting as an omen not only of poor fortune, but also of impending death, as it has always been known for. Situated at the southernmost region of Canuck Chase, the heritage site of Castle Ring preserves the remnants of an ancient hill fort. Seated atop the highest point in the reserve, it is believed to have been constructed around 50 AD, by an Iron Age tribe named the Cornovii. This former military location has also been the scene of several bizarre occurrences and manifestations, seeming to act as a focal point for supernatural activity in the area. In July of 1986, a local resident named Pauline had gone to relax at the site, as she frequently did whenever she had time off work. Arriving early in the day, she laid a blanket at the edge of the clearing, and then settled down to read a book. But some time into her relaxation, she began to feel anxious, without fully understanding why. It was only after she put down her book and concentrated on her surroundings that she was able to identify the cause. The everyday sounds of the chase had gradually ceased around her, to the point where she now found herself sitting in an overbearing and uncomfortable silence. There was no bird song or animal noises to be heard, with the natural swaying of the grass and trees steadily slowing to a point where there was no movement whatsoever. Then a figure came stumbling out into the open from a thick patch of foliage situated a short distance away. This newcomer was deeply unsettling in appearance, caked in dirt, unkempt and heavily bearded, wearing an assortment of animal furs and skins. He was clutching a rudimentary weapon, which seemed to have been fashioned by fixing deer antlers to the end of a long wooden stake. Upon catching sight of Pauline, this strange man became agitated, initially levelling this weapon at her and then cautiously approaching. At first, she believed she may have inadvertently stumbled across some form of reenactment, or prank show being filmed for television. But despite being armed, the man moving cautiously towards her seemed terrified by her presence, struggling to make eye contact and babbling in a mysterious language. Moments later, more men materialised from within the surrounding woodland all dressed as bizarrely as the one standing ahead of her. They began to take up positions around the edge of the grassy circle, with several of their number motioning aggressively for her to move away from them. Grabbing hold of her belongings and slowly backing out of the clearing, Pauline watched on, 
bewildered as they began to chant in the same strange language, raising their hands towards the sky. She then became aware of an imposing shape descending towards the assembled throng, travelling through the sky upon a pair of broad wings. It was a dark coloured flying creature, which was bat-like in appearance, but with reptilian characteristics. This monster's appearance was so horrific and threatening in nature, that it prompted Pauline to turn and flee back into the cover of the trees. Turning momentarily, she saw the men standing around the circle now engaging it in battle, using their primitive weapons. In turn, it screeched and lashed out at them with huge talons, before Pauline fled away from the conflict deep into the woodland. The sounds of nature resumed around her as she seemingly returned from wherever or whenever she had temporarily been transported to. Other visitors to Castle Ring have reported sighting UFOs in the skies above, as well as fur-covered creatures which seem to resemble the Sasquatch of North American lore. The site has also been the scene of several encounters with a sinister entity, which has been witnessed at various locations across Canuck Chase. An elongated and slender figure dressed in black, which has chased and attacked several visitors before disappearing into the depths of the surrounding forests. One such encounter with this terrifying character was relayed to a local historian named Lee Brickley. The unnamed witness account describes how during the early hours of the 2nd of January 2015, he was travelling across the chase and walking in the vicinity of Castle Ring. Due to the extreme lateness of the hour, he had naturally assumed he was alone, only for a sudden movement off to one side to suggest that this was not the case. Straining his eyes to see through the darkness, the witness became aware of another figure walking parallel to his own path across the site, almost mirroring his movements, but on the opposite side of the clearing. As he observed, this figure continued to plod along at a steady pace, before beginning to somehow levitate off the ground still moving as if walking, and at the same speed. At this point, having risen several feet into the air, the floating figure seemed to become aware of the witness's presence, and began to gravitate across the clearing towards him. With the distance between them closing, the appearance of the airborne entity now became clearer, illuminated by the full moon above. He was very tall and exceptionally thin, to the point of emaciation, dressed in a long black overcoat which was topped off by a corresponding Homburg-style hat. But the most disturbing aspect of this entity's deeply unsettling visage was its eyes, which seemed to be glowing a vivid red. Its speed progressively increased, lowering itself towards the witness as it approached, attempting to take hold of him. At the last moment, the witness instinctively ducked to one side, narrowly avoiding the pair of spindly hands reaching out for him. His attacker had hissed loudly in frustration, as the man quickly rose to his feet and fled the scene, leaving Castle Ring and its sinister trespasser far behind him. The earliest sighting of what is believed to be the same entity took place not at Castle Ring, but in the vicinity of the German military cemetery, five miles to the northwest. This is the resting place of 5,000 soldiers of the two world wars, moved there from other sites following an agreement with the German government during the 1960s. As with Castle Ring, this is another location within the boundaries of Canuck Chase that presents a focal point for supernatural and unexplained phenomena. In the summer of 2001, a researcher named Mike Johnson selected this location as the starting point for an ecological study he was conducting on the chase. Arriving at the cemetery one afternoon in June, he set off along one of the nature trails to survey the local flora and fauna. 
As he walked, he paused at certain points along the route to take pictures and make notes. A regular visitor to the area, Johnson was perplexed by the lack of animal activity that day, being accustomed to seeing deer and other animals in the grounds adjacent to the trail. The distinct absence of birdsong was also unnerving, to the extent that he considered abandoning his task and returning another time. Reasoning that he may as well finish what he started, the researcher pushed on into a more open part of the chase, catching sight of a group of four hikers approaching him. But as this quartet slowly laboured down the trail from the opposite direction, and as their features became clearer, Johnson slowed his pace. Whilst three of the group looked fairly similar, presenting as older local residents out for a lunchtime stroll, the fourth stood out entirely. Walking a little behind the others, as if deliberately trailing them, this figure was far taller, apparently dressed in a formal suit made of black and dark grey material. Its skin was deathly pale, and its arms were unnaturally long, dangling down by its sides, seeming to almost touch the ground. As the distance closed between them, Johnson found himself physically recoiling from the group to avoid having any contact with them. He could see that the tall figure had no face whatsoever, possessing instead a perfectly smooth and glistening area of skin where its facial features should have been. It had since moved forward so that it was level with the three elderly walkers, moving its arms around them, touching them on their shoulders and their faces. And yet, they seemed completely unaware of its presence, walking and chatting to one another, the haunting entity continuing to manhandle them as they did so. As the three men walked past Johnson, regarding his shocked expression with a degree of curiosity, the creature travelling with them seemed to move in closer, wrapping its arms protectively around the man closest to Johnson and leering at him with its expressionless face, as if to warn him off interacting with them. They disappeared into the wooded area of the trail that Johnson had just emerged from, seemingly unaware of their unearthly fellow traveller. Lee Brickley has spent several years studying and compiling the various supernatural incidents reported by people during their travels across Canuck Chase, with the dark long-armed figure being the most threatening and persistent of such occurrences. There are even reports of it manifesting inside houses adjacent to the area. Two witnesses separately contacted Brickley following a newspaper interview, and despite not knowing one another, they described eerily similar accounts regarding this strange creature. Both stated they had awoken to find a shadowy portal forming in the corner of their bedrooms, through which an entity with long-reaching arms and red glowing eyes had emerged. It had rushed towards them brandishing a set of sharp fangs, taking hold of and squeezing them to the point where they had then passed out. They had later awoken in bed to find themselves alone once again. Brickley remains unsure about the origins of this sinister figure, but draws parallels between the reports of shadow people and sleep-related demonic entities which have been witnessed elsewhere across the globe. There is also a resemblance to the Slenderman Creepypasta, which has emerged from the United States in recent years, although the Canuck Chase encounters predate this by quite a margin. As we will go on to see, this long-armed intruder is far from being the most notorious resident of Canuck Chase, but there are other entities which are said to haunt the area, including one which is believed to be the byproduct of a military experiment dating back to the Cold War. Be sure to join us for part two.